Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome. Many of you helped me figure out that these are called printer's trays or printer's drawers in a recent updates video. And I went and bought a bunch of them after a big search on the internet. And at this point, they still have cobwebs and some chipped paint and some different things going on. But it is Saturday afternoon, maybe two or three, and I'm determined to get these ready to go in my craft room to store my woodblock stamps. The light is starting to fade. Now we're out in the backyard. This one is wet because I've sprayed it. And I'm starting to figure out that some of them have paper in the layers. So that's what looks old and disgusting and in different levels of ink saturation. And when I started fighting it, it was a nightmare. It was like wet wallpaper in a grid. You could try and take the backs off to do this, and maybe that's the smart way to do it. What I will say is don't add the water first. Scrape and scrape and scrape and scrape and then add the water. These, many of them were brittle or damaged on the back. I just didn't think there was any way I was going to pull off the back, get the paper off, and put the back back on. You can pull out the slats if you take the back off, I think, at least on certain ones. They're not all built exactly the same. This one right here, this particular one, I haven't finished. I did part of it. I'm very right-handed. I'm just trying to hold the camera and show you. So that one I haven't finished. It's still in the garage waiting, but you can see I was out of daylight and I didn't want to do this in the shop and have to clean it up. So this is that evening and I had three of them all set to go in the house. These are in a warm room. They're going to dry overnight and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to use to take the slots out. Because the thing that's really great about these printers printer trays or printer drawers is they're not all the same size. So what I did was I sat down on the carpet with a chisel and a hammer and this saw I fiddled with and fiddled with the next morning. It was dead, dead. See, it has a cool tool. Finally took the whole thing apart. I didn't take any pictures after we bought a new one and used it to cut the slats out. But what we did was we just cut straight down and then if I had to clean it up with a chisel, I did. That's why I put pictures of the saw in there. When I opened the saw up, I realized that there were plastic parts inside that were damaged and it wasn't coming back from that. So we did just get a new one. You can Google chisel saw. This is what Sunday morning in the craft room looks like. It's a little rough for sure. But it's a good starting point to deal with all this. Did I sound convincing? That was the actual audio from Sunday morning. And when I planned this project, I, in my head, imagined that these would be done and on the wall Saturday night. I don't know what I was thinking when I decided to actually rinse them off with the hose, because clearly that wasn't going to happen. And it was just a much bigger project. I didn't even get into the craft room till the evening. Then, because the saw is dead, Mr. Crafting and Relaxing said he'd go to Home Depot, pick up the new saw, and I would prep. Note to self, go with him because he got a phone call and sat there at Home Depot and talked for like 40 minutes or something. In his defense, the saws were locked up, so he couldn't really be on the phone and it was tricky. So in the meantime, I'm doing a little bit of prep and thinking, okay, when he gets back, he's going to want to know what I want and I don't have it figured out. And just fiddling, just staring at things and thinking, okay, how will this work? The blue shelf over on the right my favorite thing about that is the color. The shelves are a little big. It's never really worked great. So I decided to take it down. It is currently sitting on the floor still. It's out of the way, but I don't have a plan for it. It was originally like a little teacup display thing. I think I got it at a garage sale for a few dollars. I was shocked when I took that down. It was casting a big shadow and kind of sucking the light out of the corner. And then I wondered if I wanted to put more wood back up there or if I wanted to leave it white. But I really needed the storage space and I didn't feel like it made it nearly as dark. The little dots of tape are marking where there's nails and things that I think need to come out, you know, so you don't catch your hand on them or mess them up. And I'm trying to figure out how high can I reach all of that. Then 
He's not home yet, so I think, okay, I'm going to test this one out. This is the one that I chiseled most of the spaces out. So I'm going to see, can I put my stamps in it? Do I like how it's going to hang on the wall? Do I think this is going to work? Do I need to take out more spots? At this point, I know that we're going to screw them to the wall. The downside of that is I really need to have my plan before I put it on the wall. It's not going to be like a lift on and off easy thing. The upside is it's less likely to fall on my head. And my walls are strange paneling. So I don't know, putting things in them is tricky, but clearly I don't care about damaging them. So I loaded it and then I realized it's probably upside down because those little tiny spots, I didn't want those way up at the top where I wasn't sure I'd be able to reach. And I really had a hard time putting things in them. So then I started marking slats that were remaining. I wrapped blue tape around them and that meant cut the ends out. The system wasn't clear to Mr. Crafting and Relaxing, but my plan was you don't cut the middle, you just cut the end and the end so the tape's not in the way. Get it? And it helped me figure out how they were going to be and how they were going to lay out. So I decided, okay, this one is upside down. So the tape that I put on it had an arrow of how I wanted it to hang on the wall. And that was because I wanted certain stamps down at the bottom, frequent use, easy to use, and maybe other ones up at the top. And that is serious overkill. I mean, you could just cut some shapes out and slap them on the wall if you want. Then I'm trying to figure out, I know I need more, and I have plenty of these, which ones am I going to use? So I have that one figured out, marked on the wall, I know I'm going to put it there. Then I'm fiddling with this other set of Dollar Tree hooks, and am I going to keep it? Nope, it needs to go too. It was hung in a terrible way. I mean, it was ugly. So I took that down. I may need more hooks on the wall, but I figure we can cross that bridge when we get to it. I actually haven't done any heavy duty, maybe done any crafting except for the dog journal. So I don't know if I'm set up well or not. So see, I've loaded it all up. Then what I did was not only did I take a video for you, but I took a photo. So I knew how it went together. I also prepped this other one. Look at, see all these blue things, the spaces, they have to come out. That was my plan. And at this point, I'm still waiting for Mr. Crafting and Relaxing to come back from Home Depot. But I figure eventually it'll happen. It's Sunday at 3.02 p.m. I would not say it looks better in here, would you? We've decided that we're gonna screw the drawers to the wall and because I got some of them wet, I just wanna be sure they're absolutely dry before we screw them on. So I'm not gonna put them on today. This is number one. I have a box of stamps that goes in it and it will go right there. This is number two and it will go right there horizontally. And there's number two stamps, number one stamps. I pretty much have them figured out how they're gonna go. That's how I knew which slats to cut out as I planned them as I went. Maybe that's a little obsessive, but it seemed like a good idea because then I know I have places for my stamps. I do have these guys right here that I haven't figured out how to place yet. They're just, these are too tall and wide, and a couple of these, this one is weird too. They just, well, this one was buried, and some of the others, they just got beat by something else. So they might go in, but I might need to put more over here on this wall to make it work. And I love this one. It's just cool shapes. I don't want to cut a single thing out of this one, and I don't know how functional it is. It just looks really cool. So I might just hang it on the wall. Okay, it's Monday and we're gonna put them on the walls now. The heat was on, they dried all night, and we've got our plan figured out. Everything's labeled and I think this will go pretty fast because I knew which ones I wanted where. What I didn't think about, which I knew, is my wall is rickety, not not rickety, it's far from flat. It is like a roller coaster ride of a wall. So that was something that we had to think about when we put those little blue shelves up and it became a factor here. When he puts it on the wall and then I check it, that right lower corner wobbles. 
and I'm just checking at this point, this is the first chance I've had to test, see, it wobbles. When they're on the wall, do the stamps stay in them? Does it fit nice? So we put a screw in the bottom right to secure it because then it just pulled it into the wall and tightened it up. And Mr. Crafting and Relaxing had the idea to just put it in behind a stamp so it wouldn't show at all. But the screws he had, the heads didn't go in flush and then the stamp didn't fit and it made me crazy. So he just moved it up a little bit. You know, there's those discussions during projects. We're sped up a lot. We're not mad. We just, you know, that's how you move when you're sped up. <laughs> so look at it. I think it looks really cool. What do you think? And it doesn't stick out very far. It holds a ton of stamps. I think it's pretty cute. You'll get to see when the next one goes up too. Then we put a stamp over it. So then we're going to go, we're going to do the next one. And I put it high enough that I could still use the top blue shelf, but not so high that I can't reach the stuff. The wall was really buckled and I couldn't find a long level. So we were using a really short one. And turns out this drawer, the front of the drawer wasn't very straight. We'll cross that bridge in a minute. There we go. It's as close over to the right. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep the clear set of shelves over there on the left. My gut says it's going to come down. I just, I haven't figured it out completely because I have some stamps that I haven't found a home for on these yet. So we'll see. So he just tries to find a stud, at least one, and screws it in. But he drills the hole through the thing first. So that's why he goes down on the ground where you can't see. There we go. Boom. He checks it. It's really floppy. See, the wall is just weird. And then we stand back and we notice it is very crooked. <laughs> and then we talk about, yeah, very crooked. So we had to loosen it up and lift that left corner up. You guys can't tell so much, but yeah, it was pretty crooked. And the walls have the vertical stripe from the paneling, so that did not help. It was very obvious. I couldn't tell because his head was in the way. Then we fixed it, tightened it up. Okay, I took photos, so I just had to put them in. The problem was the photo was upside down, remember, because the thing was upside down when I did it. So then I finally figured out I could lock the rotation, pivot it, and it was the right way up. Look how cute it is. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I have a few tiny blank spaces, but I still had little stamps sitting around. So those are filling up. I had stamps in project drawers, dirty stamps in the drawer. I'm still finding them. So here I had a picture. Everything was right set up. The large butterfly, that brand has a bevel, a big bevel out of the inside. These printer's drawers that we found. They're only, I think, one inch deep. My other one was like an inch and a half or more. So some brands of stamps will not sit on these shelves. And the Big Butterfly was an example of that. And the Star is the same brand. So that threw it off a little, but I had a hunch those might not work. So then I swapped in the birds. Those birds that Kathy sent me, they're very tall. And I just thought, okay, I have an idea here. And so I put one in the star space and mixed it up down below. My strategy in making the spaces and filling them was to do the big ones first. Because you always find little tiny stamps around your room that you can fill in here and there. I hope this gave you some ideas and inspired you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.